In chapter 9, we're going to learn how to read and write uh, from files in Python. We're also going to learn how to open and close files. So before we do get into that um, kind of detail, first I want to look at a way to think about files and um, their structure. Now, file structure actually is operating system dependent. And one of the things to keep in mind when you're working with files in Python is that ultimately what Python does is make a request to the operating system. So if you want to open a file, Python actually asks the operating system to do that. If you want to read or write to a file, Python is requesting the operating system to do that for it. So for a basic text kind of file that we're going to be looking at, the easiest way to think about it is in terms of bytes. And each byte is going to contain um, a character of some sort. So it could be a letter, it could be punctuation. And in some cases, it can be a special kind of character, command character. Um, oh, and hopefully you guys can see this. Okay. So in this case, I have a file that contains the line, hello world, followed by an exclamation point. And it's a brand new day. Uh, file by a period. At the end of each one of those, I've appended um, a new line character. You have to be careful in some operating systems to get a new line. You just append the new line character backslash n. That's one symbol. Um, it actually won't print out. Uh, if you try to print backslash n, it'll actually just give you a new line. It won't print out backslash n. Um, and it's one character, unlike l or d. Um, that didn't make sense. <laughs> if I put L and D together, um, that's two characters, but this backslash with the N, that's one character, a new line character. Um, okay, so then looking at this file, we have two lines in here, hello world, and it's a brand new day, each followed by a new line character. And then at the end, we have this last character, end of file. That's something that the operating system maintains, or you can think of your program as maintaining it. That's just to tell um, the operating system or your file where the end of, or your file, your um, program where the end of file is. All right, so let's go take a look at Python. Oh, I forgot one thing. <laughs> there should be an apostrophe here, and I know that. I'll have to spot for it. So I'll type it in, and Excel gets rid of it for me. I'm sure I could fix that, but I don't want to go to the trouble. Thank you, Microsoft, um, for enforcing bad grammar. Um, let's go take a look at some code. So I'm going to open up a file, rw, read, write, dot text. So it's going to be a text file. Um, this is the mode that you open it with. You can open a file just for reading. You can open a file for reading and writing. Um, this is opening, reading, and writing in the plus sign. If the file doesn't happen to exist, Python will create it. I'm also going to enforce encoding, and I'm going to encourage you to do this, to be UTF-8. That's the modern way to encode characters. We've talked a little bit in class about ASCII. That's the old way to encode characters, and it works great if you have a simple alphabet like ours with 26 letters. Um, and you want to code and code those letters and some special characters like new line. However, in these modern times, we include other languages like Chinese, for example, which is much more um, complicated to encode. So there is this, it's actually a variable length encoding system. I don't want to get into a lot of details here, but if you're just encoding a letter L, you can encode that in one byte or eight bits using ASCII. But if you want to encode a Chinese character, sometimes those take two bytes. Um, anyways, that's probably more than we need to know about that. Let's just suffice it to say that UTF-8 allows all those kinds of encoding. And I think the important part is to be consistent when you are using a file. So enforcing UTF-8 um, allows you to know what kind of encoding is being used and it won't you won't run into troubles if you don't include this part in the open then you're basically defaulting to whatever the operating system gives you and you could have some interesting results so let's just leave that in there uh, we don't need a lot of details on encoding
Okay, so we write, we open up a file, readwrite.txt, inside the program, we have to give that a name, we're going to call it f, and f stands not just for the file, but it also has all kinds of attributes with it. So f, <clears throat> we can ask for the name, and then with f, and this is using the dot notation for Python, so we can ask what f.name is, that means the name of f f.write means write to f, and we're going to write it a character string, that hello world string. Um, we're going to write, it's a brand new day. And I'm going to take this command out, and then we're going to ask to read from f. Now when you read from a file, you automatically get a string, and in this case, we want to strip any special characters off the end. And this is where things get interesting, because different operating systems use different methods to encode an end of line. In my particular case, I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm going to get a backslash R backslash N on the end of the line. We're going to see more about that in a minute. Um, if you write strip from the end, backslash R backslash N, then you're just going to get rid of all the special characters on the end of it. It turns out that that one command will take care of any operating system that currently exists, I believe. So just always put an R strip on the end of your reads to again take off any special characters that are on the end and now we're going to ask to print s1 and s2 and then this is a very important command close the file um, depending on the mode that you're in when you open a file often what happens is if you have a file with data in it it will open a file and essentially erase anything in there expecting you to write back out to it um, or if you don't close it, there will be nothing in there. If you open a file and close it immediately, then it'll leave it alone. But the problem is you can run into an issue if you open a file, um, you do a couple of writes, maybe you do some reads or some other things in the file, and you forget to close it, and then maybe your program hangs up or something, or the operating system crashes, you've now got an open file, and what happens with that file well, the worst case scenario is the operating system opened it, um, sent the fi set the file to an empty file, expecting you to write to it. Nothing ever happened. And so when the crash happens, you end up with nothing in your file. And if that was an employee database or something, um, your employers are not going to be happy with you. So we have to um, force the file closed. And we're going to learn more about this in, in subsequent um lessons but for right now we're just going to do an open and close this is not real important data so this will work just fine and let's see what happens here so we write a couple of lines to the file and then we read them in all right so i'm going to open now this is also important this here let's change this to all files so the file we're about to run read right to a file is in um, the directory chapter 9 day 1 for me in my Python programming. And so the text file that I'm writing to, unless I specify a different directory, and I could do that in the open command, um, is going to be in the same directory. So here's readwrite.txt. I happen to have that file already made. So I'm going to open that in Notepad and notice that there's nothing in there. Okay. So I'm going to run this program. And I'm run the wrong program. So let's try that again, read right to a file. <clears throat> and so I get one line, read right dot text. Actually, I get a couple blank lines in there too, but rw.txt was the file name. Then we wrote to the file. Now let's see if anything happened there. Right now I'm not seeing anything in Notepad, but and Notepad's good for this for simple text files. So we did write to the file. The file now has hello world is a brand new day inside of it. So that write actually did happen. But what about the read lines? Why did those not occur? Well, when you're reading and writing to files, there's a file pointer. So initially when you open a file, that file pointer points to the zero position. And anytime you do something to that file, it updates the file pointer. So we wrote the, the string hello world to the file which put a new line in and put the file pointer right there. And at that point, the end of file was right there. Then we wrote, it's a brand new day. 
and now the file pointer is here. And then coming back to, so we did, we did those two writes. Those two writes put the file pointer here. And then we try to do a read line, which means that we are reading from here. And so essentially we're reading in an end of file character, which prints out as, well, nothing, um, or maybe a carriage return. So what we need to do is after we do these two writes, we need to set ourselves back to the beginning of the file. And so that's what this command does, the seek command allows you to go to a position in the file. And the first position is the zero position. So we're gonna seek back to the first position and almost sounds like we're doing ballet. Um, then we're gonna do the two read lines and print and we should see maybe some more interesting results here. So now, because we've gone back to the first position in the file, when we execute the first read line, um, it reads in hello world and the second read line reads in it's a brand new day. Um, I guess something I glossed over, maybe because I thought the words were obvious, is this is going to read in a single line from a file. And in this case, a single line in a file means something that ends with um, a new line character. I've written them as backslash n. In Windows, it's actually backslash r, backslash n. Notice that these lines are variable length. They don't all have to same, have the same length. So I have the words hello world here, and then it's a brand new day. And the next line, um, that's a longer line, but it's one single line because it's, again, terminated by the new line character. So a line just means um, all the stuff up until the next new line character. And read line will read in an entire line. And then again, I cannot emphasize this enough, make sure you close your files when you're done. Okay, let's go to then the next program, um, texter.text. And again, just to verify, uh, I'm gonna open up Texter. Now the very original, oh, and see now Texter's got something in it. Um, we're gonna do something interesting with this. Uh, I didn't erase this out, but that's okay. So we're going to run texter.text. Um, so again, opening up a text file and read write mode, encoding UTF-8, just to be sure. We're going to write out then four lines. Each one of these lines comes with a backslash n on the end, so they're going to give us a single line each. Um, so we're going to write these four lines to the file. We're going to go to the beginning of the file. So the seek takes us back to the beginning of the file. F.read, if you just do F.read, we'll actually read in the entire contents of the file. A little bit dangerous. You wanna make sure that you don't read something in so large that you uh, overflow your RAM, but in this case, I think four lines are pretty safe. Uh, so this will read in the entire contents of the file. We're gonna print the entire file. And then when you do that, so when we do f.read, and so I have this line count over here, when we do f.read, initially we had, this is important to get used to this kind of arithmetic, um, we had written to the file, so we'd written those four lines out. When you write those four lines out, again, that puts you at the end of file. Then we seeked back to the zero position. That puts us back here. Then we do f.read, which reads the entire contents of the file. And in the process of doing that read, that puts us back to the end of file. Um, then we print the file out. So now we're at the end of the file. I'm going to go back to zero. And I'm going to read three bytes. And after I, after I read those three bytes and then print them out, so we're at the beginning of the file, we'll read three bytes, it should get LIN. I'm gonna wait for a second, and I want you to think about what this next line is going to do. So I'm gonna run this, um, read and seek. Okay, so this is the print ask command right here, line one, second line, third line, I'm done counting. Now we seek to zero. And we read the first three characters, zero, one, two. It gives us LIN, and now we're waiting. And we're waiting for f.tell to tell us where we are in the file. So what position are we at? 
Um, so this is going to tell us what position we're at. Then we're going to go to, let's see, where do I want to go? I want to go to the fifth position. Let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, fifth position. Um, we're going to print out. So f dot read here is going to read one byte or one letter. And I'm doing a, a kind of standard print argument here when you're reading one character sometimes you can get special characters like a new line so I've surrounded it with brackets just to see sometimes if you get a special character you can't really see what you printed so if you surround it by brackets you can see it a little bit better and now we're gonna wait to see what happens okay so I'm going to hit enter here and my question is what do you think the f dot tell value is it is three so, three, how is it three? Let's see, we read in three bytes, so we're at zero. Well, it might be easier to actually do this over here. Zero, one, or, I'm sorry. We read in three bytes, one, two, three. That puts the position on the E, but when you count, that's zero, one, two, three. So the position of the file pointer is actually on the E, and that is position three okay and then we went to seek dot five so let's see z uh, let's, again this is easier to do in the excel file so zero one two three four five um should have put us on the one and then we read in one byte Ooh, let's see why we should have gotten a one Hmm. Well, what happened there? I'm going to take this input out. And... Huh, okay, I'm not sure. I must have missed something. Um... Well, we've seen what these do, so I'm going to take these out, and I want to run this a few times uh, to show you something. So we don't need, well, we don't need to print the file out anymore either. <clears throat> so I just want to look at this f.seek and print to see something interesting. And again, this is actually going to be file system dependent, so you have to pay attention. So we didn't f, let me read, run this again. So we're only going to print out what is in the fifth uh well at position five so zero one two three four five we're printing out a one if we do six we should get a blank and again that's why it's nice to have the brackets there so that you can actually see the blank so at six we should get a blank and then at seven we should get that new line character. Whoops, that's a wrong program. So seven, we get a new, oops, that doesn't go there. Seven, we get a new line character. And then at eight, what do you think is gonna happen? Well, this is a part that again, is operating system dependent. At eight, we get the exact same thing, and here's why. I am on Windows, and remember that actually in the Windows operating system, new lines are backslash R, backslash N. So uh, most programmers tend to think of this as one single new line, but in Windows, because it's special, it's actually two characters. So position 8 would be there in Windows, and if you logged into um, a Unix server, well, you get a different result. You get an S in that case. Okay, so position nine, I guess the, one of the points of that is when you do a seek, you better be careful because um, what you get is going to depend on what operating system you're on. So in Windows, position nine gives us an S. Um, and then one of the things that I wanted to point out was we're going to do this position nine. We're going to do a read, and then after we hit enter, we ask for an f dot tell, and what do you think that's going to give us? So we do a tell, and it gives us a 10. 
tell us the position. Why is that? Well, because you, we're at position one, or position one, position nine, and then you executed a read of one byte. So that moves you from position nine over to position 10. So that is why that is a 10 when you do the f.tell. And then at the end, close your files. Very, very important that you close your files. Okay, so there are the basics of reading and writing to files in Python.